Hey guys, what's up? Morty here with another episode from the Bats and Slot item series during leveling. This time we will look at the 29 level cap for the warrior class. For your gloves, the best option at this level will be the Auge Fist. This item drops off the Murwok boss Geleast in the Black Farm Deeps. It is pretty easy straightforward fight, you only have to remember to clear most of the nearby mobs as you can body pull and get your group into a trouble. Another good option, however hard only, are the Warsong Gauntlets from the quest Warsong Supplies. This one starts from Lokokar who is situated outside Splinter Tree Post in the Ashen Vale. You can start this quest only on level 22, but keep in mind that unless you get the help from someone, you won't be able to complete it that early. The quest itself requires various of quest items. The first one are Warsong Soul Blades, who can be obtained from the NPC Pixel in exchange of one deadly blunderbuss. This one is crafted from an engineer or you can blast some gold in the auction house. Warsong Axe Shipman is another item that you can get from Booty Bay in the Strangion Tor Vale. This one is probably the easiest. Warsong Oil is another item that you need for the quest and you can loot from one of the Satyr camps in North Nashville. This one may be tricky, so watch out. There are plenty of mobs around those camps. The last item that you need is the logging rope. This can be looted from any of the four books in the Ashen Vale. Another good option are Wolfie's Gauntlets, which drops from a level 32 rare mob, Commander Felstrom, who is located beneath Sentinel Cemetery deep in the crypts in the Darkshire. For your belt, really good choice is to find a skilled leather worker and craft you the Raptor Hide belt. Despite this item is leather, it still gives a fair amount of stamina and strength. For the Horde faction, there is the quest Free at Last, which will generously reward you with Windsong Singe. The quest starts of the Koto Windsong, who is imprisoned on top of the Grim Totem's camps. You have to escort her out of Dark Cloud Pinnacle, but be careful because there might be situations with 3 or 4 mobs spawned. For the Alliance side, there is the quest Hyper Venom again in Thousand Needles. This quest starts from Fiora Longbeards in the Dustwall Marsh and will reward you with the Windborne Belt. The quest is in fact nice to be done despite your class as it gives a large amount of experience for its level. If you still have Cobran's Grasp from level 19 and you want to skip the mentioned above belts, you can stick to it as it's still fine item for its level. Believe it or not, but Shrofts of Westfall are still one of the best leggings that you can get for that level range. So, I hope you've skipped the stuff from the quest line that defies Brotherhood. Your other option is to look for a fine blacksmith and pay him to craft you green iron leggings, or if you're already one, you can craft them by yourself. Cavern Deep treasures are extremely rare boots, and chances of having a pair of these are really low. However, you can try your luck and venture to Gnomergan. They can be looted there for many of the mobs. Despite their good portion of stats, it's not worth to hunt them in the auction house as they will be expensive. You can go for a cheap choice and search for Phalanx Boots of the Bear with plus stamina and strength. For your shoulders, you can get your hands over Sparkle Show Mantle. Again, you can check in the auction house or just hope to be that lucky and some of your hardcore friends make you an early present to your birthday. The cheaper version is to go again for the services of a blacksmith and craft you a pair of green iron shoulders. For your chest slot, there are plenty of variations. The first one is the shining silver breastplate that can be made for many blacksmith with 145 skills. It's not that cheap, however. You will need 20 bronze bars, 2 mosa gates, 2 lesser moonstones, 2 iridescent pearls, and 4 silver bars. You do the math for yourself and decide if you go for the grind or just obtain your best chest from a dungeon. Mutant Scale Breastplate is a powerful chest for its level which drops from the last boss in Willing Caverns. You have to slay the elemental boss, then speak to the druid in front of the instance, escort him at the hidden cave inside the dungeon, and after a couple of mob waves, the Murwok boss Mutanus will spawn. My favorite way of grinding the chest is completing the quest Fire Hardened Armor for the Alliance or Brutal Armor for the Horde. Both quests are available on level 20 but completing them will require you a bit more time and level for the task. You have to farm various quest items and venture into Razumfen Kral 
in the end. There you must slay Rugok and loot the vial of Wojiston. After you complete that quest, this will unlock 3 more quests for helm, gauntlets and leggings, which in fact are not that bad. For the helm slot, you can go for the Tuscan helm. This can be obtained from the boss overlord Ramtus in Razumfen Kral. Green Iron Helm is also a good helm which can be crafted from a blacksmith. Maybe you are already considering being a blacksmith during your leveling. Brutal Helmet and Fire Hardened Cove are the helms that you can get from the quest lines that follow Fire Hardened Armor and Brutal Armor. After completing a few more quest chains, you will have a decent helmet. Frost River Crown is a BOE rare drop, which is also a really nice helmet, but I don't think it worth the gold spent on the auction house. Necklaces are still rare items for this level cap, but we have quite some options here. River Pride Choker is a green necklace which I think you can find on the auction house for a cheap price. Basalt Necklace of the Bear is also a BOE amulet that you can buy for a minimum price or be lucky to have one during your leveling. Pigeon Bone Amulet is a blue necklace from the rare bat boss in Razzlefine Crown. Considering it is increasing your stats with spirit and stamina, you might have a trouble with some pre slurring on that, but for me it's ok to press need. Fugilist Bracers can drop off any mob in Razzlefine Crow, sadly the chance is really low. Jimmed Handcuffs are a strong option for the Alliance players only, as they can be looted from stockades from the rare dwarf boss named Rugo Iron Knuckle. Other variations from the market are Jorgen Bracers and Renegade Bracers. The best in slot clock item surely is the Tiger Strike Mantle. I do believe that this thing will cost at least 10 gold on the fresh start of the servers, so unless you wanna go too sweaty, I would rather skip that. A way cheaper clocks are Nice Clock of the Bear and Renegade Clock. Talvers Gold Ring for the Alliance and Nox Gold Ring for the Horde is a nice ring from a random quest item that drops from the Dark Iron Dwarves in Nomergan. You will hunt for the Grime Encrusted Ring, then completing the quest will reward you with a green ring. You will have another follow-up quest to bring a silver bar, mossy gate and 30 silvers to upgrade the ring into a blue one, increasing your stamina with 9 and new spirit with 4. Keep in mind that hunting for that quest item from the Dark Iron Dwarves may be a dangerous call because we all know how many people lost their characters trying to do it and eventually pulled the entire Dark Iron Wing. Silver Lane's Family Seal is an amazing ring that drops from Baron Silver Lane in the Shadow of Ankeep. Seal of Sylvanas is another fine ring for Horde only that we already covered in the 19th level B item list, so I won't go here in details. For the Alliance players, we now have Seal of Rin, which is a huge quest chain that starts from a ladder after you kill Van Cleef, then sending you to the stockades and after some here and there talks in Stormwind, you will have to slay two mobs level 31 and then in the end you will be rewarded generously. For a two-hander wielder, I would suggest using the Corpse Maker in the first place. The axe is really amazing, with its 3.8 speed it will increase your damage dramatically. You can try farm the axe from Razov and Crow from the boss Overlord Ramtusk, for two-handed swords, you have the Strike of the Hydra, another nice option from the last boss, Akumai, in the Black Param Beeps. If you want some shield and mayhem or dual wield spec, you can go for the Alpha Saber again in Black Param Deep. Sadly, it's only Horde. You have to kill Aquamantus and return his globe. Keep in mind that you have to be in the quest in order to spawn him. Crew Barb is still a thing for that level and if you have kept one, that was a good call. For the shield slot, you can get Commander's Crest from the boss Commander Springwell in the Shadow Fun Keeps. Or you can go for the Marble Buckler from the RFK quest, a Vengeful Fate for the Alliance and the Crown of the Crow for the Horde. That was all for today's video for the 29 level cap best list. I really hope that the episode was helpful and useful to you. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to my channel. That means a lot to me and will keep me motivated to do more nice stuff. Have a great day and I hope I see you again in the next one.